Hi everyone and welcome back to Polar Size. We're in the studio as usual at the warehouse gym. My name's Jade. Today's tutorial is going to be based on a flying cat. This is upon request of one of my students. The flying cat is a very graceful and elegant spin and it's not as hard as what you might think. So without further ado, let's get started. First I'll show you one flying cat on its own and then I'm going to break it down for you step by step so that you can follow along at home or in your own studio and then I'm going to show you some different variations of the spin that you can take into other moves. Taking the pole as high as you can possibly reach, up on your tippy toes, what you're going to do is you're going to jump your seat and your hips around to the other side of the pole, okay, jump and you're going to place the pole here on your shoulder and do a reverse grab. So your hands and your fingers are facing down the pole, you're going to kick your outside leg around and push off your other leg, then you can bend. One more time, reaching high, jump, grab. Keeping the pole on, your, on this side of your body, kick around and bend. Before you start your flying cat, it's very important to understand where you need to position your wrist on the pole. Okay, so a lot of people make the mistake that when they go into the flying cat, they leave their elbow behind the pole like this. You want to push your wrist forward so that you get your elbow in front of the pole and you come here. So the, the pole is running behind your arm, behind your shoulders, and then into your other hand, okay? If you're here, there's too much uh, grip on your arm here and you will not spin as nicely. It is very important when you're starting out with a flying cat that your pole is dry. So it's nice and clean, okay? Make sure that you use um, a grip as well. Not too much grip, but just enough that you're going to hold onto the pole and still be able to slide when you're going around but you've got that solid grip in your top hand because you're only holding on with that top hand for that split second. So you need to have the best grip possible in your, hand, in your top hand so that you don't slide down. When you become more confident with these steps in your flying cat, you're now going to add more momentum using your core and your hips to move yourself and fly around the pole. So, for more momentum, you're going to walk around the pole and you're going to kick your legs out and fly them around the pole. Okay, walking around, step, kick, and grab. Okay, one more time. Walking around, kick, and grab. So now that you're confident with your flying cat, I'm gonna add a little bit of spice and I'm gonna show you a couple of other different variations that you can try with your flying cat. First variation is your flying cat into a pretzel, okay? I'm gonna show you first and then I'll break it down for you. With this variation, what I did is I hooked my inside leg and I wrapped it all the way around the front of the pole. So, I'm in my flying cat here, okay? And as I'm spinning, I'm taking my inside leg, bringing it behind and wrapping it in front of the pole. Now, your second leg can either stay straight or you can bend it in so that your feet are touching at the base of the pole, okay? One more time. Very 
Position two is your flying cat into a chair spin. When you're in your flying cat, you're then going to release your bottom hand from the pole. You're going to turn your body out and then grab the pole here. So you're grabbing the pole underneath your bust and you're pushing into the pole and both knees are at 90 degrees in front of you, like you're sitting on a chair. Okay, one more time. Once you're confident from taking your flying cat into a chair and you're confident with that rotation of your body, you're now going to take it into a forwards boomerang. Exactly the same as your flying cat into your chair, you're releasing this hand and you're spinning out from the pole and instead of grabbing here underneath your bust, you're going to turn your hand down and place it on the pole, basically in front of your hips and you're pushing into the pole with that bottom arm, pulling down with your top shoulder and then your legs are going either side of your pole. I'll show you one more time. Last but not least, I'm going to show you a leg burst flying cat. Now this move, you need to have a lot of grip on your top hand because you're going to throw yourself away from the pole, leg burst your legs and then take it into your flying cat. See, with your leg burst flying cat, you need a lot of momentum, all right? So you're going to jump and skip and hop around the pole to get your momentum, fly your legs forward, and then you throw into your flying cat. One more time. Please don't be put off when you first start your flying cat. You will end up with some small pole kisses on your wrist. It does burn a little bit, but only a little bit, okay? Do keep it up and do keep practicing and you will build up a tolerance on your wrists where you won't feel uh, the burning sensation or any pain of any sort anymore, okay? Also, practice on both sides because you don't want one arm stronger and the other one weak, okay? You wanna keep your body even as much as possible and you don't wanna end up like this, yeah? <laughs> so, practice both sides. Please let me know how you get on with your flying cat. Um, if you need any more explanation or you need me to break it down in a different form, also let me know. And if you have any other moves that you want me to break down as well. Hit the notification button, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time. Bye!